What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Team Runner here, and welcome back to another video. And today I'm finding out if my favorite number one racing shoe is still any good. To another video. You join me out here down at Cannot Ponds, double threshold day today, and you are joining me on the second workout of the day, the final one. I'll talk all about that in a second, but the purpose of today's video is talking about my favorite racing shoes and if they're still any good. Now, I hear a lot of you are probably going to say, I thought the Alpha Flies were a new favorite shoe. Don't get me wrong, they're probably realistically a tied first place, but the original Next Percent ones were my favorite, and uh, I think the reason is I just the foam feels different in the Next Percent. To. I'm not going to bang the drum on that. I've talked about that way too much, but the foam in the next percent version ones feel very similar to what's in the Alpha Fly. Super soft, super squidgy. I just don't quite get that in the version two. But that aside, I have to say, these shoes now have 200 miles in them. So there's two reasons why I'm out here doing this test. Number one, I wanna race in these next week. So I'm doing a legitimate test to see if they still feel good after 200 miles. And secondly, the last time I wore these shoes was back in November and I hit the deck massively during the Nuance 9 race. The grip on the bottom seemed to completely disappear. So I thought, come out here, get rid of any negativity surrounding what happened there because I kind of have this thing that the last time I tested these shoes I was out here uh, out on the tarmac run over a bit of gravel slipped feet went out from underneath me hit the deck and it really flipping hurt so I want to kind of dispel that and also see how they feel as I said after 200 miles so I've done a 15 minute warm-up I'm out here now and I'm out doing another shifting gears type of workout talk about that shortly got some drills and strides to do Okay, so let me explain the workout. Drills and strides done, wanna go right now. So we have a kind of shifting gears workout, but it's more of a cut down workout. So just going through the motions realistically, if we're talking gears, if you saw that video a few weeks ago, we're talking third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. That's what I wanna to achieve tonight. So we're cutting down four sets of 1K, 600, 400, all the threshold effort. But what I'd love to do, hopefully, and this would be great, but this is the second workout of the day. The legs are a bit tired, so I'm not sure it's gonna happen, is go 5.30 pace for the 1Ks, 5.20s for the, 400, uh, for the 600, and 5.10s for the 400s. I very much doubt that's gonna happen, but it would be great because my current 10K PB is 5.28 per mile, I think, or 5.29 or 5.27. So with that in mind, the 5.30s is going to be slightly behind my current 10k pace, or hopefully my 10k pace will be a bit quicker now, but you know what I mean. Currently behind, my 600s will be on it, and my 400s will be a little bit quicker. So that's the goal. That's what I'd love to achieve. So I'm going to start off with these four sets. We're just having a minute between each one, a minute, very light jog recovery, but these are all at a, at a controlled effort. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. No extra rests in between sets. Uh, people keep asking me that when I record these. Do you have extra rests between sets? No, I just roll straight into them. One minute in between each thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So I'm going to go up here, just past the pay station, turn around and get on with this 1K.
halfway done. I'd have been putting the paces on screen, but uh, so far so good. Feeling good, which makes a change from last week's second session. And I think that's all down to uh, me dialing the pace back this morning a bit on this morning's session. Anyway, let's get number three and four done and we'll wrap it up. Come on, baby, on a hot and humid evening, I will take that. So just looking quickly on my watch at stat, obviously the paces were well above and beyond what I thought I could do. And I felt so cruisy. That felt like a breakthrough session. Now, don't get me wrong. I've only done two double threshold days and they would not be kicking in right now, but I'm hoping what this is, is kind of like the shoes helping me combined with a bit of a step up in fitness. Obviously we're in week, what are we in week four or five now, five now of this plan. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of hoping that that is a good, good sign. Um, just looking at stats quickly in terms of heart rate, because I know that's what I was comparing it to last week. Heart rate is higher this week. So I think the average heart rate last week was 162. The average heart rate today was 165, uh, topping out 178, whereas last week I topped out at one, uh, 171. So in terms of the effort, there's a lot more effort there, but I am sweating buckets. It's way hotter this week. I was freezing last week. I started this run at 15 degrees, so it's probably like 12 or 11 by now, but still it is super humid. I'm dripping and I class that as a massive win. But of course this video is not just about this workout. I am over the moon with this, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna go back, grab my dinner back at the car, I'm I'm talking about these shoes because I've got a couple of thoughts on them. Some good, some bad. So I'm not 100% sure right now what my decision is going to be. So back at the car now, two mile warm down, done. Feeling good, feeling really confident and feeling happy with how that went. I've got to say that felt like a massive breakthrough. But anyway, that's not the point of this. I want to give you my verdict on these shoes and I have my answer. I kind of before I was warming down, I was a little bit on the fence, but I kind of knew maybe what way I would sway. But having a look at the shoe now, it's just made me realize that actually I'm gonna have to retire these things from racing. But let me tell you the two things that I was thinking about at the time. I was thinking about grip and how bouncy the foam still was. Obviously grip based on the fact that I hit the deck last time I wore them but also how lively the foam still felt. So I've got to say the foam felt absolutely great, still felt really good. So these now have about 212, 213 miles in them and the foam feels really, really good. But the problem is the grip. Let me show you what I mean. So obviously I felt this during the drills and strides. I didn't let on, but I kind of was like, oh, this isn't good. Doing the high knees, the skips and things, I could feel the traction under my feet. My feet were just skidding. And if I was running in a straight line down Cannot Ponds, down that straight tarmac, it was fine. But when I had to turn at the end, I really did have to take a wide turning circle. It really is starting to lose a lot of the grip in this top part here. And if you especially look in and around the toe off area, it's really starting to wear down. But it was this middle section here that was kind of concerning me. And if I look straight down there as well, I'm seeing some lumps and bumps, some chips out of the uh, of the old foam at the bottom there, just here and there. And it just feels very, very slick. So I am really hesitantly and regrettably gonna have to retire these things from racing and not use them at the Rose Inn race next weekend, which is gutting because the foam still feels really, really lively. But what I will do is I'll continue to use them during training. I really wanna wear these down and take them to the end. I feel like if I'm out on a flat tarmac uh, area like I was then, the things would be absolutely fine. But I think more so if I'm doing lots of turns and that's where I hit the deck and you and nine going around a corner, uh, they just completely wiped out from underneath me. And um, that is kind of the evidence that I needed to just have to sadly say that these things are going to have to retire. Absolutely gutted. And one of the main reasons I'm gutted is because Nike had a sale on for them 
about two months ago. They had the mango colorway and the white and blue one just getting rid of all their old stock. And they had size 13s there. They were £144. I was hesitant. I delayed, I delayed, and I didn't end up getting a pair. Um, and now I'm really kicking myself because I'm kind of wishing that I got a pair. The foam in them is just, for me, another level to what's in the next percent two. The next percent twos just feel a little bit too plasticky um, and a little bit less responsive than what the alpha flies and the foam in these next percent ones feel. I know a lot of you guys agree with me. A lot of you don't know, have a clue what I'm on about and you feel the same with the ones and the twos. I get that, I understand, but for me, 100% there's a difference. So I'm a little bit frustrated with myself for not jumping on that and grabbing a pair uh, whilst I did, but at least we've tested it and at least I've found out and I've not turned up to the Rose Inn uh, and maybe hit the deck again. So I'm gonna now rethink, probably end up using the Alpha Flies or maybe I'll take out the next percent twos. We'll see nearer at the time. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. I'm gonna eat my food before going in, uh, going home, getting into bed and hopefully having a good night's sleep. Another solid double threshold day in the books. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I will see you on the next one. Until then.